introduce this. Um, I, one of the things that I'm grateful uh, to be uh, at a hospital here in, in small town America in West Tennessee willing to invest in new procedures and, and new options uh, that seem to improve uh, the outcome of the patients who need it. And uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I'm Kyle Stevens. I grew up in Springville. Uh, I know several of you. I've seen several of you uh, on numerous occasions. I uh, grew up in Springville. Uh, graduated high school here in 98 and then I left for 17 years doing school and came back uh, been here a little over two years uh, back home I uh, work over at West Tennessee Bone and Joint Clinic uh, up on the corner uh, here in town and uh, glad to be home uh, my wife and our family we live out towards Springville uh, so we bought a house and place about four miles away from where I grew up and so if you know Randy and Donna Stevens those are my parents uh, don't hold that against me. Um, they, uh, uh, they've been here a long time, and so that may be a connection for the name. Um, dealing specifically with hip arthroscopy, uh, during our time together, I, don't, I sure don't plan on talking for a full hour, and so we'll use whatever time we have, and if you have questions, feel free to, to bring those up. Uh, kind of some basic questions we're going to go over. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, a lot of that can be self-explanatory. Who needs it? Who doesn't need it? Uh, and uh, and what and how do you do it uh, and and kind of go through those questions um, the um, when, when, when a patient comes with us or comes to us um, with the, you know a lot of times they'll say my hip hurts how many of your hips have ever have ever hurt for any reason okay good there's a bunch of hands good all right so that's gonna happen and so you're gonna show up at some doctor's office somewhere and say my hip hurts uh, as far as that goes and, um, and we always kind of differentiate uh, that. And so, and, and we'll ask, we'll say, okay, your hip hurts. Well, where does your hip hurt? And some of you, and some people, they'll come in, and man, it's creative uh, where, the, where the hip joint is. Uh, I mean, they'll say, you know, it hurts kind of in here, or it hurts, and they'll point to their rear end, and then they'll point to kind of down on their thigh, and some will be on their knee. And part of what we do is we, we, we have to figure out um, one of my previous talks, or the other lunch to learn I did, was basically on, on spine or low back uh, spine work. Uh, and, and people that have arthritis in their low back, sometimes, hip, sometimes my hip hurts means my low back hurts. Sometimes my hip hurts means my knee hurts and it's coming up my hip. Sometimes my hip hurts and means I've got bursitis and it's just inflamed. Sometimes my hip hurts and means it's actually the hip joint. Uh, as far as that go goes on, and that's what we're here to, to kind of discuss today is one more option for the hip joint. One of the things that you will hear um, doctors, and if you see any orthopedic surgeon uh, here in town or elsewhere, when you talk about hip pain, uh, or is it truly hip pain, hip pain is, is groin pain. The hip joint itself is actually embedded deep in the pelvis. Uh, the ball, when I say the hip joint, I mean the ball and socket. Uh, th this thing, uh, well, that's not it. But that first picture I had up there, the ball and socket um, is, is deep down in the pelvis. Let me go back to that. And so if I, uh, so if you come in here and you point over here, like a lot of people will say my hip hurts and they'll point right here on the side. That's pointing right here to this tip of the bone. That can be anything. It can be bursitis. It can be your low back. It can be you just slept wrong. Um, all kinds of things. The hip joint itself is, is deep within the pelvis. And so this is not something that's superficial. You're not gonna feel that, you're not gonna stick your finger on yourself and feel your hip joint. It's, it's way deep in there. You can't get your finger there. Um, or something's really bad wrong. And so, the, um, and so the hip joint is deep within the pelvis. And so if your hip hurts and you show up in our office, you're gonna get the, the typical workup as far as that goes. We're gonna get an x-ray. Uh, we may get, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll check on different things. This is a picture of the top left is an x-ray, the kind of a standard picture just looking at your pelvis from the front. Uh, the picture on the right is an MRI of the hip, and a picture on the left is a CT scan. And we'll go over those just a little bit. But basically, we're going we're gonna to talk to you. If your hip hurts and it's actually your low back, then a hip arthroscopy is not for you. Um, the, that's not something you need, that we're gonna go a different route. Um, if your hip hurts and it's truly groin pain and feels like there's something catching or grinding or popping or 
floating around in there or whatever those sensations are, then we'll pursue it. We'll probably send you for an MRI and maybe even a CT scan um, <clears throat> to better assess your hip. The reason we do both, uh, these are, um, actually this is the same patient, this MRI and CT scan are the same patient. This is a young lady that we, we did a hip scope on uh, a few weeks ago and uh, had had a previous hip scope and did well with it several years prior. Her pain came back, same kind of pain. She came in, her hip hurt, it was in her groin. We sent her for an MRI and ended up doing a CT scan on her and she had a bone spur uh, that uh, was basically pushing on, on her hip joint. Now this gets a little bit subtle. This is not quite as obvious as you know, the, the huge bone spur, but when you look on this MRI, so can everybody see this black line here? This big black thing? That's, that's your bone. And so that's the bone. Here's the ball, here's the socket. And so see how there's a wave in the front of that? Can everybody kind of see that? There shouldn't be a wave. That should be a straight line or a relatively curved line. When you get a CT scan, the difference between an MRI and a CT scan, uh, MRI uses a magnet to assess, to, to rearrange the liquid uh, or the water that's in your tissues to give us this picture. Uh, a CT scan will use radiation to give us a picture, but it's much better detail of the bone. This is her hip joint. And what you will, I don't know if you can, I don't know if it shows up in, for the people in the back, but this is her, this is the side of her hip. See this big knot? Right here? Mm -hmm. So that, that's there. And so that is that is this uh, on her. And so basically what, what we did with her, we wound up doing a hip scope. We shaved that, that bone spur off. She's doing great. She feels good. You know, we're glad. Uh, and that was basically all she needed um, as far as that goes. But if you show up in my office or show up in anybody's office, you're going to get some version of this. You're going to get an x-ray. You're probably going to get an MRI. Um, to, uh, to let us better see the soft tissues of your hip uh, and go from there. Now, if, you're, if you walk into my office or you walk into anybody's office and your hip joint looks like this, you're not gonna get a hip scope. So, this hip joint, uh, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get one of these. Anybody got one of those? Anybody know what that is? Yeah, that's a hip replacement. And so, uh, one of the things with hip scopes, uh, let me show you, this is a very abnormal x-ray here on the left. The, the space that should be between this ball is no longer, and the ball that should be round is no longer round. And so, so, the, uh, so this is bad arthritis. Good old Arthur showed up in this hip. If you compare that x-ray to this x-ray, here the space between these two, between the ball and the socket, can everybody see the difference between this x-ray and the one on the next one? So there's a space here between the ball and the sockets here. And on the next x-ray, there is not. That space is gone. And so the, uh, there is no space between, this is bone on bone. And so what arthritis is, uh, and one of the things that we often have discussions with patients uh, regarding arthritis. Um, what arthritis is, is the cartilage, the smooth, white, shiny sur surface on the end of all of your bones, in all of your joints, that cartilage goes away. And, it, and when it goes away, what's underneath it is bone. When that cartilage goes away, we don't have a way to regrow cartilage yet. Uh, I think the, the talk next month, stem cells, there's tons of research going into it. Um, several doctors are doing it. The data is still a little premature to say, yes, you know, insurance should pay for this, but it, uh, that day may come. And so, but we're basically, we don't have a good way to put the cartilage back. So. If you have ever heard a doctor say, I went into your knee or your shoulder or certainly your hip and I scraped out your arthritis, he did not or she did not because you can't scrape out arthritis. So again, arthritis is the cartilage itself is missing. It's not a fungus that grows on your bone that you can go in and scrape off or, and then get rid of and then when I get done, hey, you don't have arthritis anymore. You've got arthritis because the cartilage has gone away and it will go away for a variety of reasons. Uh, that can be from an injury, that can be from activity, from how much you've used it, that can be from other diseases that cause the joints to, um, to wear out, that can be from all kinds of reasons. Um, and so, but if you have arthritis, uh, a hip scope, what we have learned is uh, if you have really bad arthritis, a hip scope, like a lot of arthroscopy in any joint, sometimes will simply just aggravate the arthritis and take it off. And so if you've got bad arthritis, you don't need a hip scope. 
like really bad arthritis. This, this uh, gentleman here on this x-ray has very bad arthritis. That this is not a hip scopable hip. Um, this, is, this is something you need a hip replacement. A lot of you have, a lot, a lot of you probably have those. Um, they do well. The majority of the time, that surgery's been around a long time. Hip arthroscopy is not going to replace that surgery. And so don't, don't, don't leave here expecting that we're going to make a few poke holes in your hip and be able to avoid a hip replacement forever and ever, amen. And so that, this, it's not going to do that. Like this is not a substitute. Uh, this is not a substitute for a hip replacement. This may delay a hip replacement. This may assist uh, that depending on how, how bad your arthritis is. This is not a substitute for it. These hip replacements have been around for a long time. Patients do very well. Um, and those will continue to be done. Where hip arthroscopy will come in uh, on some other things that I mentioned. Um, all right, before I start. So, what is hip arthroscopy? Um, arthroscopy of any joint, um, uh, or a scope of any joint, is where we basically use small poke hole incisions um, to put a camera into the joint. Uh, we, we use the other incisions to use put instruments and to pass uh, sutures or to remove things that need to be removed. We can do repairs through those holes. And basically it is a minimally invasive option to operate on your hip joint. Again, the joint is deep inside your pelvis. So that's the joint we're going after with a hip scope. This is not for over on the side. Um, th that day may come, but we're not there yet. Uh, these surgeries are outpatient. You know, this is not the typical surgery um, from, you know, across the nation is probably somewhere for a hip scope. If we have to do everything that you can do through a hip scope, you're talking about an hour and a half to two hours. So it's a little longer maybe than like a knee scope, if you've ever had a scope on your knee, uh, but it's still an outpatient procedure. Um, you will get uh, what we're doing now, the anesthesia staff usually does a block to help with your pain postoperatively. And then we, we do the procedure, it's outpatient. We do them at the surgery center here pictured on the right. Um, and in most instances, the recovery is pretty quick. Now, that depends, that will depend on how much work we have to do once we get in there, uh, as far as that goes. But, um, uh, but this is a, basically an option that allows us to get into your hip joint um, and, and do what we need to do. Um, now, with a, with a hip joint, there's, who, who needs it? Or, or what are you looking for? These are the primary reasons as to why, you know, if you come see me, we figure out it's your hip joint, we go from there, and, uh, uh, and, and we think, you know, we do an MRI, and it shows some stuff wrong. This is what, I'm, what the discussion will entail. One of the most common reasons for a hip scope is what's called a labral tear. Anybody ever heard of a labrum? So you probably heard of it mostly in your shoulder. There's one, there's, there's, that structure's also in your shoulder. There's one in your hip. Uh, it's a band of tissue that goes around the socket. Um, and, it, and it's a band of tissue that helps as a suction cup to keep the ball of the hip joint in there. Um, it can tear. And so if it tears, you get groin pain. It's, like it's kind of like tearing a meniscus in your knee. If it tears and you get a flap and it gets stuck between that ball and the socket, it'll hurt like the devil. It'll feel like somebody's stabbing you every time you walk or try to bend or sit down or bend. That kind of thing. Um, loose bodies. So... Sometimes bone spurs form, they break off. Sometimes there's diseases that cause loose bodies. Some people get hurt and it dings a piece of cartilage and that piece of cartilage floats around the joint. If you've got a piece of, you've got a little marble floating around in your joint, we go in there, we can take that out. Um, bone spurs. Certain bone spurs uh, will form on both the ball and the socket. Sometimes it doesn't have to be on both sides, but there's no rule that says bone spurs can only form in one place. Uh, they can form on both places. And there's certain, depending on where they are, uh, we may be able to shade those off. And what this does, the bone spurs uh, will, you know, the question is, will they come back? Well, I don't really know. Um, they might. Uh, but this is where, if we leave the bone spurs alone, they will get bigger. Now, that we know. Bone only knows one trick, and that's to make more bone. And so that's all it does. And so the bone spurs will get bigger uh, as you age. Uh, as you use that hip and as you use those joints. And so if we can get them early, sometimes we can put off that hip replacement for a few years. We're not going to replace the hip uh, through a scope and we're not going to avoid a hip replacement altogether in every patient. Uh, however, it is an option for you. Um, there are certain tendons. There's one tendon in general and uh, specifically uh, that runs over the front of the hip. 
sometimes that irritates the fire out of patients. Um, and if it does, uh, that is an option that we can go in through a scope and actually get that tendon, release that tendon and get it out of the way. Um, what will often happen, and you'll, you'll see this if you, uh, in the research and that kind of thing, some people who've had a total hip, who have already had a hip replacement, who seem to have the arthritis pain is gone, but they still have this groin pain and it's, and it's not infected and it's not loose and all of the, you know, you've done all of the stuff that you know, but you still got groin pain. Sometimes there's a tendon that runs right over the front of your hip replacement that will irritate the fire out of you. Uh, in fact, I've already done one um, here in town where the tendon was just irritating the fire out of this guy. We scoped it, it goes away. And so, so it's, a, it's a quick procedure. And so these are options, these, uh, these issues are things that a hip arthroscopy or a hip scope can address. These are, these are the good reasons uh, to, come see, to come see us.